Why, hello and welcome to our Thursday Rendezvous. Each week, I'm going to be talking to experts in the renovation, property and design worlds. And I'm going to be asking the questions that you've been dying to ask. These are just short chats with the experts bringing you the 411 in a way that we can all understand. So we're going to break it down for you. Strap in. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hi and uh, welcome to today's chat. I am chatting with Nicholas Skopoulos from Nick Scott Real Estate. Or actually, I should give the formal title on that. It's Nicholas Scott Real Estate. And I have to say, Nick, okay, first question off the bat. I feel personally lied to about the fact that your surname isn't Scott. What is the deal? What's the deal? <laughs> What's the name? Thanks for having me first, Lauren. Oh, so first, thanks. <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> so um, Scott is my nickname. Um, so when you know I took over the business back when I bought it in '88, I thought I can't have Scapulas on the front door. You know the Wog kid. Even though I'm born and bred in Australia, <laughs> I'm Francis Street. Went to the local you know community school. Um, Scotty was my nickname. I thought you know what Nicholas Scott it is. And there yep. we go. <laughs> there you go. All right. I'm glad we got that one. Got one sorted. <laughs> um, all right. So what I wanted to get you to cover off today, because you guys know your private sales inside out. And in fact, I bought my house from you guys, private sale back in 2011. So had a great experience. It's <laughs> FYI. Um, and I actually, I was quite interested by that experience, actually, because up until that point, I've always bought properties um, via auction. So... <laughs> That was a completely new experience to me and parts of the whole sort of private sale um, uh, sort of negotiation felt a little bit covert because I didn't really know how it all worked. You know, that was just submit, submit your best offer, um, envelopes get open, best offer is accepted. So I just thought there's, I'm sure people have got questions about how that works. Um, so keen to just chat, chat through what does that, um, method of sale look like, particularly for vendors, you know, benefits really of selling via private sale um, and some things that people who are looking to buy a home um, that is marketed as private sale, what they need to know going into that process. So just hit me with what you've got. Um, you know what? There's no right or wrong, Lauren. So every system works. You know, we believe in what we're doing because at the end of the day, it's all about bucks. Every owner wants to get as much as possible. But it's that simple. Now, whether an agent's doing an auction, whether they're doing a private sale, whether they're doing um, expressions of interest, technically, at the end of the day, the owner's thinking, what's going to get me the best price? And I've got a really simple question. Um, and from the outset, I want to say everything works. No one system is better than the other. It's really the agent and the negotiator you pick that's going to be able to obtain the best possible price. Because, you know, I'm going to say it flat out, there's some really great agents in this area and there's some shit house agents in this area. <laughs> you know, like we laugh about it, but it's real. Consumer, yeah. uh, you know, are witnessing it every day of the week. Um, but, you know, I say that the really good ones don't get enough credit and there's a lot of them, you know, our office and the other offices in the area. But one question I ask, you know, a, a, a buyer, uh, if they've bought at auction um, and they're the winning bidder, um, because the only thing we've worked out is what the losing bidder's maximum was. No yeah. one ever knows what the winning bidder's budget actually was and what they would have gone to. Yeah. As an owner, they're employing an agent to get the best possible price. Simply. Yeah. Right? Now, did they get a great price at auction, private sale, or whatever system they've used? Probably they did. Did they get the best price? No one knows because that's a scary question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no one asks the winning bidder, come on, would you have gone more? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Too scary, you know, like at settlement, you know, if someone says, oh my God, we've got the bargain of a lifetime, I would have paid a hundred thousand more. It's yeah. great. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it does happen. It's real, unfortunately. Um, and that's why we've chosen to do the private sale because we ask everyone for their best price. And you know what? We have round one, round two, round three. So no one misses out and everyone gets an opportunity to come back in. It's not yeah. one and only. Because the underbidders um, never always tell you what their best price is. They're always holding a little bit back because they don't trust the agent. You know, yep. agents, you know that, that video singer says, trust me, I'm a real estate agent. Bullshit. You know, they're not trusting you. <laughs> yeah. And that's a really good, sorry to interject there, but I think that's a really important point as well. You know, I often get asked questions about 
you know, should I disclose what I have as my maximum bid, particularly in these sorts of situations where it is a little bit like, am I going to miss out? You know, at least at auction, I know it's, you know, it's transparent. I know where we're at, but I just, yeah. How do you position yourself in the best um, place when you're dealing with an agent and, and you're negotiating in that sort of um, setting? Yeah, yeah, and, that, that, and that's a super valid point, Lauren, because some people think, no, nah, Mr. Agent, you're giving me the, the BS story. you got nothing, yeah. and um, I'm not going to play that game. Now, yeah. in some instances, that's probably right. Now, the agents that do that, they get caught out. There's no question. Um, and so they should. Don't bluff it. Just tell the truth and tell it the way it is. Yeah. Because the buyer, buy, the owner wants to sell, stop the games. Just be transparent. Tell it yeah. the way and do the deal because that's what you're employed to do yeah so and you know it, it is a valid point where at the auction they feel comfortable because they've got transparency mm. um you know so some people go that way but the risk is you know if you don't get what you think you should be getting and you undersell it that's bad you only get one shot at it yeah it's possible price yeah yeah absolutely and so the benefits of private sale, in my experience, um, they, and what I talk to people about is you've, you've got the opportunity to do a few more of those sort of checks and balances that people feel a little bit um, uh, unsure whether they want to do when they're in an auction, auction situation. So, for example, those building and pest inspections, you know, that just sort of checking a few more of the boxes because um, you've got no guarantees of course if you're if you're going to auction that you're going to be successful and, and you may have invested that money um in those sorts of due diligence exercises so um can you just talk to us a little bit about the difference from the buyer experience perspective going um private yeah that, uh, that's a really good question lauren because you know every buyer should have full disclosure you know we don't want to hide or we don't want to do the wrong thing by anyone as agents and i think that's generally the case Give them the opportunity to do the building inspection, whether it's private sale auction. Um, you know, they risk their five or six hundred dollars if they're bidding at auction. Um, that is the risk factor. I, I reckon that's a bit unethical. Um, I think they should have the option to do it all over the world. They're allowed to do valuations and building inspections. You know, okay. in Victoria and New South Wales, or Victoria predominantly, which is the auction capital of the world. I don't know yep. if you realise that. Um, no. You know, it's, you know, some of them don't get the opportunity and they get surprised. Our demographic of buyer, some of them have spent all their money. They don't want that surprise. Yeah. Um, you know, some agents think, oh, well, it's done. They've signed, they've bought it, see you later. Um, it's not quite right because if you're here for the long term, not the short term, just do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to come back to something that it just made me think. Um, let's chat a little bit more about your observations of the market. You know, you've been around since 1951. Is that right? Yeah. You've been in the West, so you've seen it all. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Not me personally. I'd love to say I'm 100 years old. I'm nearly. <laughs> bugs are fantastic. Looking good. Looking good. Um, um, let's let's oh, come I, back to that. Yeah, I started in '88 in this office. So, yeah. um, you know. Luke, I remember vividly, we sold one in Oven Street. We got $65,000 and the boss God. at the time, which was George Kerry, you know, took us down to the pub. It was fist pumping, like record result. Um, and to look back now, you think, oh, my God, we've come such a long way. Yeah. And the area's still got a long way to go, Lauren. Like, we're, we are still the cheapest inner city suburb mm. um, in this area. So you draw a 6K radius, we've got great coffee shops, um, the vibe, the demographic, um, and we're still the cheapest. Yeah. So still, there's still plenty of growth there. Where's your fa favourite place in the inner west? If you could choose a street or a pocket to buy in, where would that be? I've got to tell you, I love Princess Street, Berry Street, top end of Stephen Street. Um, yep. Yarraville, for those playing at home. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, Fionn and Powell as well. You know, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Really beautiful, beautiful, nice, wide tree line streets. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They'd be my picks too. Yeah. But they never come up. You need <laughs> to do something about that. Yeah. Tongue Street <laughs> is another really good street. Yes. Um, yeah. Some beautiful spots and beautiful homes with character and um, people don't sell because they're keepers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, that's the challenge. Mm. Yeah. Once you're in, you want to stay. Yeah. So, yeah. absolutely. Um, Let's just chat a bit about the current market because we're in this, when this series kicks off, 
it's just in the you know prime time of the market reopening and and it looking very differently what what are your thoughts no um, boundaries around those thoughts just no, what are your thoughts? no 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 chance I, I reckon like we've come back monday so they've given us one-on-one -on -one inspections which is fantastic i'm sure every agent or every diligent agent should be flat out um because the inquiries we've had during COVID and waiting for this to open up and obtain inspections has been immense. We're booked up until Saturday. Um, there's five of us selling in this in this office. We're all fully booked. Um, just to give yeah. you a there's probably an excess of 50 inspections between us um, up until Saturday, because people want to buy. Money's been the cheapest it's ever been. Um, people have still got really good work um, or jobs. They're, they're, they've got long-term opportunities. And right now it's cheaper to buy than it is to rent. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the demographic of buyer is, you know, singles or couples coming from rental accommodation in Hawthorne, South Melbourne, South Yarra, um, Turak, or even locals that have come to experience what it's about before they actually take that next step. Yeah. Um, they're buying. Um, yeah. And buyer opportunities are fantastic. You know, the government gives you 10000 on a newbie or no stamp duty for your first home under six fifty. It's, it's good stuff. Like they're pushing. Yeah. Um, you'd be crazy to be renting. Go and buy. Everyone should buy a home. Yeah. Don't worry. I get those in my slipping into my DMs on the regular. People asking for my advice on this area and, and you know, getting a bit of a first hand scoop of it. It's it's definitely hot. Yeah. But where the market's going to go, I mean, there's there's so many mixed emotions. And if you take Bill Evans out of Westpac, who's a really a followed. Um, you know, guru in that finance area. He's saying third and fourth quarter of next year, um, we're just going to spike. Um, it's just going to get stronger. Um, and I believe in that as well, because our area, when you look at it individually, won't be affected um, like the blanket that they talk about, um, because it is a blanket. When you break it down into specific areas, like the inner west, you know, there's not much room to move because we're still affordable. Um, we've got a really good demographic of buyer, um, a good vibe to the area, and they've probably got secure work, able to borrow. Um, so, and it ticks a lot of those boxes. So I, I can't see us dropping anything. Um, yep. And we certainly haven't dropped anything coming out of COVID. Prices yep. are strong, buyers are still strong, um, and making commitments. Because that's the other yep. thing, they're buying. This is good. This yeah. is all good stuff. Yeah. All right, we're going to keep it quite short. So just a, a couple of last questions for you. So what are your tips for buyers to best position themselves to be able to seal the deal? Done. Do your homework. Um, there's a plethora of information on realestate.com um, that they can get for recent sales. They're more than welcome to email me. I'll give them a property report of any area they want, free. Um, they can, through you, Lauren. Um, and research the agent, research what's going on within that immediate spot, um, inspect the property that they're interested in and have a look at the surroundings. Have a really good look at what's going on. Um, and if you love it, you know what, if you pay a little bit extra, just buy it because it's mm. not a short-term proposition, it's a long-term proposition. That's um, it. And if you're looking at the long game, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. I think people get so caught up in, I don't want to spend too much and, you know, I don't want to pay the wrong price, but if you're going to keep it and hold on to it for a decent amount of time, these things work in, in cycles, they, they will inevitably increase in value. So, yeah. I've never come across anyone that said, oh, I shouldn't have bought it. I paid too much. They're down the track. They're saying, thank God you pushed me to buy it because I've made money. Yeah. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. My house, prime example of that okay. stretch to the limit, but, bloody 10 years later, almost 10 years later, still bloody love it. So, yeah. And because this series is called You Can't Ask That, I've got to slip in a sneaky question because this is the question that everyone's been dying to ask. What sort of car do you drive? I drive a Mini. <laughs> <laughs> a Mini John Cooper works. It's badged up, Nicholas. Um, I've seen it cruising. I've seen it at a cruising around town on my runs. <laughs> I don't have any ego trips on cars, so it's not. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm happy with my Mini. I love it. And in summer, I'm on the Vespa. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Fun. It's coming I like up. It. I'm to get it out. Exactly. Well, awesome chatting to you, Nick. Thank you so much for your time, your insights and your honesty. It's been awesome. Good luck with your series. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. <laughs>